Hi there, Phil Simborg with another position that I found interesting. Uh, normal match score, 9 away, 9 away, cube in the center, red to play 3-2 from the bar. It's got to come in off the bar. What's your play? Okay, here's how I analyze this. I'm obviously coming in with the three. I, I, if you, there's a part of the game that you know you're going to play, make that play. And the reason I know I'm coming in with the three is if I come in with the two, I don't see any really good threes around, with the exception of going all the way up to the twenty, which is what I would do if I came in with the three. Same thing. So, I'm going to take the checker, and come in with the three and look at where the twos are. Well, the first step is to think about my game plan. Um, my game plan, I can play a hitting, a racing, or a priming game plan. Well, I don't see much hope in a priming game plan right away. Uh, I'm up 46 pips in the race, so a racing game plan is a very reasonable game plan, except that holding this point and uh, the fact that he's got a decent holding game and I've got some holes in my game, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be very, very easy to just bring this game around racing. So I really am going to play uh, probably a hitting game. By definition, that's all that's left. If I can pick up a bunch of checkers and blitz them out, I'm going to play a hitting game. Or if he ends up making the second point and he's got himself a double holding game, which is also called a back game, um, then I'm probably going to have to convert to a priming game, a racing game, and bring him around. Right now, though, one of the reasons I like a hitting game is I have two inner board points and he has one. So let's look at the hitting play. The only place I can hit him is with this two. And I have to admit, after I hit him, I sure don't like leaving these three blots around. And that would stop me and stop lots of people from making the hitting play. However, he does dance once in a while, 4 out of 36 times, which is not a ridiculous number. It's about 10%. He doesn't even come in, and then, uh, wow, this is cleanup time. I probably have a double, and I don't even know if he has a take. I'm going to hit here, here, and here, and really do a number on this guy. So I kind of like it if he dances. That's not likely, though. Most of the time, he's going to come in with a 2 and make this point or come in with something plus a 5 and make this point, or come in with something plus a 4 or a 6 and hit me here. But uh, then we're getting into a back and forth hitting exchange where again I have the advantage and I'm playing a hitting game which is a pretty good game. So now I've looked at the ups and upside and downside of that play. Let's look at alternative plays because plays are only good or bad in comparison to what else you can do. Well what other twos do I have? I can bring one down here I reject that immediately. I'm not going to leave a double shot for him here and let him take the offense here and get another checker back. I could throw a checker from 8 to 6. I'm not sure I like stripping my 8 point and stacking the 6 point and losing this builder. So it's not a pleasant alternative for me and I'm not wild about it. I could go to the ace point, not leaving any other shots. I kind of like not leaving any other shots, but I hate giving up this builder hate putting a checker on the one point. I'm not thrilled about that. Or, as I mentioned earlier, I can come up to the 20 point. Uh, this checker becomes under attack, which I don't like. He, this is the next point he would really like to make. With any 4, 3, or 1, he can hit me with combinations of those rolls. He can point at me. So combinations of 4, 3s, and 1s, if all the doubles plays, there are three places uh, that he can hit me from. And if all the doubles play, I know immediately that 3 times 3 is 9. And there's 9 pointing numbers if all doubles plays. Double 1s doesn't play. So there's 8 pointing numbers. So 8 times he's going to point at me here. Plus with 1s, 3s, and 4s, he can just hit me loose. And if I don't hit him back, he can start developing a good game. So I'm not wild about this either. So the other thing is when I hit, I've taken away half of his roll. He doesn't have all these combinations. When I don't hit, not only can he make this point eight times and attack me a lot, with a five, he can make this point. With a two, he can make this point. Notice fives and twos don't hit or make this point. So he's got ones, threes, and fours that work here, fives and twos that work here. The only thing I don't see really good for him are sixes. Almost everything else, every other number, plays somewhere pretty well. So I'm just giving him 
way too much play. So the answer is, is even though it's ugly to leave these three blots here, his game is uglier, and we're better off playing a hitting game. So that is the right play. Let me just show you that it's right by about 7%, which is almost a blunder. 7.6% according to 3-ply. Let's take it to a higher court, put it to plus, which is about the next best thing uh, before a rollout. Plus plus is even a little stronger, but on my laptop it takes a little too long to roll out, but it'll come out to very close to 7%. The important lesson here isn't how to make this what the take points and price of gammons are and what my checker play and cube play strategy should be. Then I looked at game plan. I started thinking which which of the game plans is the best game plan for me. And then I looked at every possible play, every single way you could play this that made any kind of sense at all, ruled out the worst first, and then narrowed it down to the two I like best, and then looked at both plays and the upside and downside of both plays. Now, if you really want to get into the math of it, uh, and really top players will go uh, often and say, okay, if I make this play, I'll win X percentage of wins, uh, and I'll win X percentage of gammons, and I'll lose a certain number of gammons, and actually come up with a mathematical estimation of how much stronger one play is than another. If you were sharp and were able to do it on this play, you'll see that the wins wouldn't, don't make much of a difference. You win about 55% either way. The biggest difference in these two plays is when you hit, especially if he doesn't anchor right away, and roll a 2, you're increasing your gammons by quite a bit. You're going to win 26% gammons instead of... So there's, there's the real difference in these two plays. Uh, now, in... Um, in a money game, because if there's more gammons, that means that after the cube is turned, there's more gammons, which means that when you turn the cube, he's much more likely to drop, and you're much more likely to have a double sooner. What gives you a double is the amount of wins that you have and the amount of gammons and backgammons that you potentially have. So they add up, they're important, they will affect your game. And by the way, don't be thrown by this number. It's gone down from 7% to 4.8 because we've only put the top one into plus plus. We're not really comparing them both in plus plus. I'm stalling just a little very accurate. It's uh, very complicated for me to tell you what a plus plus rollout is, but it entails um, over 3,600 rollouts while we're just sitting here, uh, something that previous bots uh, Snowy would have taken uh, much, much, much longer to do on any computer. So here we have it, a 0.74% error not to hit. So as much as it looks bad to hit, as much as we don't like spreading lots around the board, it beats the alternative. I can set up many positions where hitting and something like this would be very, very wrong because of the number of blots that you leave. And the main thing that would make it wrong is if he has more inner board points than we have. And then we don't want to be in a hitting game. We want to play a holding game for now or a priming game or just a racing game, something other than getting into a hitting battle when he's got the edge. That would be the major thing that would change it for me. I uh, hope you got something out of this, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.